some problems with Steve. Steve We've lost Steve-O somewhere in the mountains, and we'll hope to find him <laughs> next week, and we'll hope to get that fixed for you. We apologize to Freedom and Shelby. A great game tonight. A very tough, tough fought battle. What was the final score in that game? Do you have the final in that game? 13-10? Um, 14-10. 10, Shelby, Shelby was the winner. And once again, we apologize, but lightning struck our tower, and that's why we could not give you that report tonight. Time for a break here on the show, but when we come back, well, we've got some scores and some other things to deal with, so stay with us. Our Steve Owner Switch, we do now have him established on the phone. All the lightning has kind of uh, messed up a lot of things. Steve O, how you doing? I'm doing all right. Well, Steve O, I, I know you, you went out there, you worked hard, you worked the sidelines, as you so much love to do every year on Football Friday night. I know it was tough not being able to get your video back in from Shelby Freedom. Tell us what happened. Well, what happened was a typical Freedom Shelby game. No matter how good each team is or poor or whatever, of course, we know Shelby's great from the last couple of years. It's always a tight game. This was a tight game, of course. And uh, the Shelby team, they took their opening drive. They just put it down Freedom's throat all the way down and scored a touchdown. Then Freedom took over and did a little uh, down the throat themselves, went on down, scored a touchdown, tied the score. Then the defense really took over and did a number on Shelby. The offense for Freedom went down and scored a field goal. It stayed that way till about five minutes left in the game. That's when Shelby did a fake punt. They had to do it. Got down deep. Larry Raper then took it around left side, went in for the winning score. Freedom just didn't have enough time left, didn't have the power at the end. Shelby wins it. Another close Freedom Shelby game. All right. Just on the like phone, it sounded amazing. Well, Steve-O knows how to deliver a story, and we yeah. once again apologize to Shelby and Freedom, but lightning did strike our tower tonight. Thanks a lot, Steve-O. Have a good weekend. We'll talk to you next week. All right, time now to take a look at the loyal locals, Danielle. Always. Welcome back for another season of Football Saturday. I'm David Allen. The Shelby High Golden Lions have won back-to-back -back state championships, and on Friday night, the Golden Lions started their season with a trip to Freedom. Take you up to Freedom on Friday night. A tough place over the years for the Golden Lions to open the season, and Friday night was no different. Early in the ball game, Mark Williams trying the left side, and he's get a stop for a short loss. Here comes Larry Raper as Shelby would try to get everybody involved on that initial drive of the ball game. How about Donovan Gidney, the fullback, plows ahead for just a couple of yards, but all those running plays set up the pass as Howard Thompson finds Chris Scott for the 17-yard touchdown pass. Turner Almond's point after touchdown was good. The Golden Lion faithful in attendance liking what they saw as Shelby was out to a early 7-0 lead, but that would not be a long lead for Shelby on the ensuing kickoff. It's going to be a nice return up the middle by Freedom. Almond's going to make the touchdown saving tackle at midfield, but it wouldn't take Freedom long to get on the board. Villanueva, the quarterback, handing it off. Actually, the fake there, and Villanueva keeps it down. A 20 yard gain inside the Shelby 15 yard line. A couple of plays later, it's Taylor Smith banging it in from a yard out. The cannon blast up at Freedom. Getting everybody excited. The game is tied at seven apiece. And then Shelby's offense goes in reverse. Williams lucky to stay out of the end zone there for a safety. That would set up Keffer. The big fullback for Freedom pounds his way inside the 10. That would set up a Colin Taylor 23-yard field goal. He knocks it through. And Freedom led Shelby as another big blast. Freedom led Shelby at that point, 10 to seven. Here's Howard Thompson on the rollout, finds his man, that's Tim Gallant over the middle, nice throw and catch right there for the Golden Lion combo. That's gonna set up Turner Amon at the end of the first half, but it was partially blocked, and it's 10-7 Freedom at the half. We'll be back with second half highlights right after this. There's no better time than now to stop by Laughlin Furniture for our store-wide sale. Fast in Shelby. Shelby High School Pet Band making the trip up to Morganton on Friday night. Trying to get everybody going and to start the second half. Got to show you this. Anthony Franklin 
Going to take the kick and watch the hit and the face mask right there nearly took the helmet off. Big penalty there against Freedom. Gives Shelby good field position. And then watch Howard Thompson, the senior quarterback, taking over for Daryl Montgomery. Scrambles around and then looks deep down the middle. He's got Tim Gallette. Big play on third and 20. Converts. But on the very next play, Thompson calling his own number, dancing in the hole, but he coughs up the football. It's back to freedom. And Coach Chris Norman on the sideline, not real happy about that turn of events. But the Golden Lions defense was stout in the second half. And then how about this fake punt late in the ball game? Shelby calls it on a fourth and one. Larry Raper for 28 yards and then Raper. He's going to be the difference maker on this play. A 21-yard touchdown run, and Shelby comes from behind to knock off Freedom 14 to 10. They start the season 1 and 0. Oh. We apologize to the Kings Mountain faithful. Technical difficulties with the video there. Join us next half hour as we'll have high. Take you over to Shelby's Blanton Memorial Stadium, Hurley Allen Field, the Golden Lions with their home opener in the pile. And early on, it was a sloppy contest. Donovan Gidney gets stood up and stripped on a damp field on Friday night, turns the ball over to the Green Wave. Josh Mackey leading the band in the stands, and Ashbrook early on would find success going on top to Jeremy Boyd. Makes a nice play, Roderick Blake and Tim Gillette combined to bring him down. He had five catches on the night and had a good game for Ashbrook, but they couldn't get it into the end zone. Here's Howard Thompson looking over the middle, finds Gillette, and Gillette's going to make a couple of nice moves. A big first down play right there for the Shelby senior connection. The faithful for the Golden Lions, excited about what's going on on the field. And then there's Corey Brooks coming in from behind to hit Gabe Beverly, knocks the ball loose. Calvin Gillette's on it for the Golden Lions, and things are looking good. There's a yet another turnover for the Shelby defense, the Golden Lion defense. And taking advantage and now the offense finally puts points on the board. Thompson to Larry Raper, 45 yards for the touchdown and Shelby led it seven to nothing, but that would be short lived. We talked about Boyd on the receiving end. Here he is, 92 yards up the middle. I sped him up just a little bit to help us out with time and that tied the game at seven. But after a fake punt gone awry, Mark Williams from eight yards out. And the Golden Lions would lead it 14 to seven and the cheerleaders plenty to cheer about at this point. Late in the ball game, it's gonna be Brooks. Coming off the end again, hits Beverly, the ball comes out, but Shelby would hold on and win it by a final of 14 to seven. That'll do it for this edition of Football Saturday. Join us next half hour for highlights of the Kings Mountain and the Crest Games. Adam Thompson is going to get picked off by Jonathan Hopper. However, not a promising start. Next play, Golden Lions would make them pay. Thompson finds Larry Raper, and he is wide open. Goes in for the score. That made it 21-6, Golden Lions. I'll give you the score. Let's move on. Shelby goes on to win it, 35-13. to 13. Our next game, things have been better for a Nice pickup inside the Golden Lions, 20 but that drive would come to a screeching halt when Jonathan Hopper intercepts Adam Thompson's pass. He nearly takes it back for the score. He's finally brought down at the Lincolnton 40. On the very next play, Howard Thompson over the middle to a wide open Larry Raper. Tip the guy ran a 4-2-4 this summer. No. I don't even think that's humanly possible. It's 21-6 Shelby. Golden Lions cheerleaders love it. They're in rain gear as well. What a surprise. Next possession for Lincolnton, Adam Thompson. Picked off again, Roderick Blake brings it back across the field, nearly breaks it himself. He's finally brought down, so Shelby playing very well defensively, then Donovan Gidney. Touchdown, 28-6 Shelby, still in the third, and they go on to win 35-13. Next up, football team of the week. This week, the rivals met in Cleveland County, Shelby versus Crest. Both undefeated in their first two outings, but you knew only one could come out victorious. As good rivalries would have it, the defenses locked it down in a low-scoring game, but it was the ninth-ranked Crest Chargers who hung on to a one-touchdown victory to receive this week's 96-1 The Beat High School Football Team of the Week. 
By now, you should know the drill. You've got all weekend long to send me an email and plead the case for your school. It's not a 61thebeat.com keyword CJ. We'll announce the winner this coming Monday just after 3 p.m. I'll see you then. CJ, every time, I, every time I see him, I always say this. He's about the coolest dude I've ever seen. Rico Suave. All right, let's see if the 96 <laughs> won the beat team. All right, D, how about a little Lincolnton Shelby? I know the song, I Make It Rain. Could the Golden Lion make it roar? We'll see. Third quarter action getting underway. Shelby with the ball. Looking to score. Number 31, Donovan Gidney up the middle. He did it. They are up 28-6. to six. Shelby, the band says, make it rain some more. Shelby defense taking care of business tonight. Lincolnton quarterback Adam Thompson sacked for a big loss. Coach doesn't like it. Shelby would score again in the fourth quarter. Jerees Haynes on the carry to the sideline. What a good game for Shelby. They won it, and that guy doesn't care if it's raining. He doesn't care about no stinking rain. Shelby won it 35-13. All right, time now for the Subway Call of the Week. And tonight, Mike Sims gives us the lowdown on something called the free blocking zone. The quarterback rolls out to run the ball. The offensive lineman engages the defensive lineman. As the play continues, the offensive lineman hits the... And as for another edition of Football Saturday, I'm David Allen. The Shelby Golden Lions took a tough loss to rival Crest last Friday night. They looked to bounce back on Friday as they took on Lincoln. Man, we've needed the rain, and on Friday night, the rain came. Coach Lance Ware's defense has been playing well early this season, and on Friday night, the offense would look to get going as well. Larry Raper turning on that 4-2-4, 40 speed. He'll go 48 yards right here. Look at him pull away from the defender early in the ball game. Shelby led it 7 to nothing, and the hard heads, hard hats loving it in the Shelby stands. And how about Corey Brooks getting in there on C.J. Wilson before he even had a chance to get started, makes the tackle. But Lincolnton would have some success. Adam Thompson going up top to Demery Brewer. Brewer was all over the field for Lincolnton on Friday night. Look at Brooks, though, coming through. Just about blocked that one with his stomach. He was so into the backfield. 7-6, to six, Shelby and the Golden Lion cheerleaders decked out in the ponchos on Friday night. How about Mark Williams? This time from 39 yards out, they got a hand on him, but it wasn't enough at the goal line. He just uses power to get into the end zone. Shelby led it 14 to six at this point. There's Dax Hollifield loving the rain on the sideline. And how about the hook and ladder play from Lincoln? And doesn't work too much there. About five yards is all they got, but you don't see that one too often. How about Aaron Briscoe nearly busting up that play? C.J. Wilson gets a couple of yards in the Shelby defense, getting the job done. The faithful out in, I would say in force, but a pretty good crowd considering the conditions. Lincoln and trying to get that running game going. Nothing doing on that play right there. And Shelby led the Wolves 14-6 at the break. Hello, I'm Janet Berry, owner of Frame Masters Gallery. I have some ideas to pass on to you. We can help you keep football memories on display, either in a shadow box with your jersey, pictures, and shoes, or we can frame your favorite football pictures. We're a nationally certified frame shop since 1976 for extraordinary art, gifts, home decor, and custom framing. Frame Masters Gallery, Uptown Shelby. Have you been there? Drive a little, save a ton at Forest City Honda. See why Honda is committed to building smart and reliable vehicles that are environmentally minded. At Forest City Honda, you'll find great deals on Accord, Civics, Elements, and much more. When it comes to service, why take your Honda anywhere else? Forest City Honda's service center has factory-trained technicians that use only genuine Honda parts that are backed by Honda's own warranty. Forest City Honda. Drive a little, save a ton. Stop by or visit them on the web at forestcityhonda.com. You got to be proactive. I think that's the key right there. And I think my leadership at, uh, with over 30 some years in the military um, and having my diverse background of working in law enforcement and my close working relationship with various community organizations, I think has, has molded me to be that type of person who can have that vision. And I hope to be able to provide that type of leadership 
for Shelby going into the future. It doesn't matter which ward you live in. I would appreciate your vote. Now for the second half, Lincoln and coming out of the dressing room, throwing the football. Brad Thompson down the near sidelines, got a man, that's uh, Tevin Avery. He hauls that in for a nice gain, and then Thompson back to pass again on the play fakes, coming down the near sideline, and all of a sudden, Lincoln finding success through the air. Thompson again. This time he's going to find Cedric Herndon in the backfield. Briscoe, Smith, and company going to wrap him up there for minimal gain, and then Thompson. On the fake, he's gonna go over the middle, but this time Jonathan Hopper says, thank you very much, the interception, and he's going the other way. Nice return for Hop, and that's got the Shelby offense back on the field and ready to go. Howard Thompson looking over the middle, has got Larry Raper for the touchdown, and just like that, Lincoln on the move, and instead Shelby's up 21 to six. The Wolves would try to get something going offensively, but. Calvin Gallet and Corvallis Murray corralling Thompson for the loss right there. Here's Thompson with the pump fake, lobs it up there, but Roderick Blake is waiting on it like a fair catch. Here he comes, Blake using his blazing speed, coming to the near side. He's gonna be tackled short of the five yard line, but Roderick excited about that, and so would be Donovan Gidney as he plows it in for the touchdown. Shelby goes up 28 to six at this point. Lincoln and still trying to find some offense, but how about that hit right there from Corey Brooks as Thompson takes a shot. Thompson, again, gonna feel like a punching bag. Calvin Gallant throws him down, and Shelby goes on to handle Lincoln in 35 to 13. Apologies to the Burns faithful there. No highlights tonight, but South Point County on Friday night as the Golden Lions of Shelby visited Burns. The Shelby Golden Lions taking the field with the traditional pile and Londell on Friday night. Here come the Bulldogs through the smoke for the Southwestern 2A, 3A conference opener for both teams. First play of the game, Kieran Phelps trying to roll to his right, but Quavalis Murray is there for Shelby with one of three sacks on the night for the Golden Lions. Coach Ron Green and his staff on the sideline looking to get something going early against that Shelby defense, but how about the Shelby offense? Howard Thompson back to pass, has time to throw. He's gonna find Tim Gallette, the senior, over the middle. A little bit of hat trouble there, but they're up seven to nothing are the Golden Lions. Then on the ensuing kickoff, Ontario Merriweather starts to the near side, cuts it back to the far side, but the football's gonna come out. The Golden Lions are on it. And just like that, it's seven to nothing. Shelby looking for more. Howard Thompson on the first play after the turnover is gonna find Larry Raper from 31 yards out. He's in for the score and just like that, the Burns cheerleaders cheering, but not a lot, as it was 14 to nothing, Shelby, and then watch Larry Raper. I'm speeding him up here, although in real time he can fly 80 yards, call it 79 yards, actually on the play as he goes for the touchdown. It's 21 nothing, Shelby, and the Burns fans on their seats on Friday night as they can't believe it. Kieran Phelps back to pass here. He's going to have the ball tipped and intercepted by Corey Brooks. Brooks, a nice little return, and that would set up Shelby again. This time, Turner Almond from 44 yards out sticks it through the middle, and it was 24 to nothing. Shelby, but the Bulldogs would get something going. Phelps to Aldrich Watson down the field, deep into Shelby territory, but Burns would go for it on fourth down and get stuffed. The WADA booth crew calling that one. And then Shelby's gonna turn the football over. Bad quarterback center exchange. The Bulldogs have it and Burns would not quit on Friday night. Watch Phelps come to the near side then loft it to the back of the end zone and he's gonna find Merriweather for the touchdown. 14 yards out and it was 24-7 Shelby at the break. We'll be back with second half highlights right after this. Drive a little, save a ton at Forest City Honda. See why Honda is committed to building smart and reliable vehicles that are fun to drive. And right now at Forest City Honda, the prices are low and the deals are great. All 07s are clearly marked to make room for the 08s that are arriving daily. Lease the 07 Accord LX for just $126.41 per month. And that's not all. There are great deals all around on Odyssey, Civics, and more. Forest City Honda. Drive a little, save a ton. Stop by or visit them on the web at ForestCityHonda.com. 
the best family owned and operated fish camp in Cleveland County, Love's Fish Box, where you can share plates, call your order in for dine-in or carry-out, book parties and group events. You don't leave tips and you get delicious extra value meals. You'll love our large lunch specials. We've just added chicken and fish sandwiches and we have great salads. Try our new filet tips and our new sautéed chicken tenders, the delicious. You can order your fish and seafood broiled, grilled, or fried. There's something for everyone at Love's Fish Box in Kings Mountain. Family owned since 1968. I think we're, we're, we're heading in the right direction on crime. I think our public safety uh, department is doing a, uh, doing a great job at that. If we, like in the Northeast Shelby corridor right now, with where our Weed and Seed initiative is taking place, or in West Shelby where Project Safe Neighborhood has done an excellent job, at least the council person should be make themselves available to, to go and sit and be at the table. I think our council persons need to be actively involved with these organizations. The Doggettes trying to get something going in the second half on Friday night. Burns trailing by 17, and early in the second half, it would be Phelps looking deep down the field, and Roderick Blake for Shelby goes up and knocks it away. Nice play by the Golden Lions defense, and then watch this play right here. Larry Raper, one of the fastest guys in the state. A little bit of a stumble there, but look at Dante Hopper for the Bulldogs chasing down. The play covered 61 yards, but... Hopper showing tremendous speed to catch Raper. Coach Chris Norman, not real sure about that. The Golden Lions would settle for a field goal attempt and it was no good. Later in the half, Howard Thompson rolling to the near side. He's gonna fire and there's that guy again. Dante Hopper this time with the interception. Nice return for the Bulldogs. And that would get Burns offense jump started in the second half. Watch Phelps as he's gonna roll out. He's gonna get in trouble as Calvin Gillette gives chase, but Phelps keeps himself alive and then finds Watson down the left sideline. He's going to make a couple of nice moves, and he's off to the races. Blake catches him from behind, but that would set up the Bulldogs. And for Ron Hamrick from six yards out, punches it in. Extra points no good. It's 24-13, and the Dogs are right back in it. But Howard Thompson, his third touchdown pass of the night. This one again to Raper from 31 yards out. And Shelby knocks off the Burns Bulldogs 30-13 to in the conference opener for both squads. That'll do it for this edition of Football Saturday. Join us next half hour for highlights of the Crest and the Kings Mountain games. Hosted Chase. Take you over to Shelby on Friday night. Homecoming and H. Tizzle. That's Howard Thompson on the option on the first possession of the ball game for Shelby. He's going to take it down deep inside Chase territory inside the 10-yard line. A penalty on the Golden Lions would back him up, though, to the 18. And on the next play, Mark Williams trying the left side, makes a nice cut inside, and he's in for the touchdown. Extra point was good by Turner Almond, and Shelby led it 7-0. Coach Chris Norman, his class of 77 in the house on Friday night, and his team looking good. Here's Williams again, this time coming to the near side. Patiently looks for blocks and then bust out of a tackle right there. The Chase Trojans didn't do a real good job of tackling all night, but the Shelby running backs were making plays. Williams all the way inside down to the six yard line. Next play, it would be Larry Raper. Looks like he's bottled up at about the eight yard line, but he keeps his feet moving and he makes the play inside for the touchdown. 14 to nothing, Shelby. And the band was fired up on Friday night. and. Next possession, Howard Thompson's going to flip it out to Jonathan Hopper. Hopper's going to take it down the far sideline. Puts a hand down to keep from going down, and he comes all the way back to the near side of the field. Hopper almost into the end zone when he's grabbed by the face mask and jerked to the ground. That would set up a Howard Thompson one-yard touchdown run. And then with just 16 seconds remaining in the half, Thompson hooks up with Tim Gallet and Gallet. Nearly goes down, but not before he's into the end zone. Another touchdown for the Golden Lions. They led it 28 to another. Speaking of the class of 77, there's a bunch of that crowd up there waving to the camera. Glad those folks could make it back. And there's Leah Rose, your homecoming queen for 2007 for the Golden Lions. In the second half, it was the Shelby defense. Corey Brooks making the play right there on the sack of Simpson, the quarterback for Chase. The Chargers just couldn't get anything going in the second half. That pass intended for the big tight end is picked off by Roderick Blake, his second interception of the game. This one he returns 46 yards for the touchdown. 
Shelby rolls over Chase on Friday night by a final of 42 to nothing. We'll be back with highlights of the Burns game. Next up, Shelby. Golden Lions try to close out a 10-win regular season facing East Rutherford. Third quarter, Shelby up. Howard Thompson rolls out, finds Jonathan Hopper. 13-yard gain. Next look, Hopper on the ground, scoring 11-yard touchdown. Golden Lions up 27 to nothing. Shelby gets the victory. Your final tonight, 40 to six. Jim. Despite being tied with Person and Hillside on the season. Keep in mind, this is a young Shelby football team rolling at 11 and one first quarter. Donovan Gidney, seven yards out, seven nothing Lions. Now it's the Falcons' turn. Wes Henderson quarterback Zach Cordes fires, but he is picked off by Shelby's Aaron Briscoe. Now Aaron loses the handle here, but Shelby covers it to retain possession. That sets up the offense one more time. Thompson at the controls, hands off to Mark Williams. How about six more the easy way? This one from 16 yards out. Shelby leads 14 0. We've talked all year long about Shelby's weapons. How about those linemen up front paving the way for a huge hole that punishing ground game again? Williams 54 yards to the house. 21 0 Golden Lions. Less than two minutes to go before the half. One more time, Donovan Gidney nine yards out. Shelby one step closer to one more state title. 41 to 7 is the final. Ira? All right, also in the 2AA, the numbers. The game, Howard Thompson handed off to Mark Williams. He put the Lions in great position early on. First and goal for Shelby. Thompson handed off to Donovan Gidney for the touchdown. Shelby up 7 to nothing. Yes, looking good. 3P! 3P! That's right, the fans say 3P. They won another state championship. Shelby within feet of scoring Larry Raper. Fumbles. Recovered by Falcons, Kevin Thomas. You can't three-peat making mistakes like that. Falcons in possession now, but not for long. Picked off by Shelby's defense, Aaron Briscoe with the big pick. He fumbled, but Shelby recovered. Set up nicely here for the touchdown run. By Williams, put the Lions on top, 14 to nothing. And Shelby fans starting to feel it. Look at the Lions cheerleader. Second quarter, Thompson to Williams again. Big running plays tonight as he ran down the field for another touchdown. Shelby up 21 to nothing. Shelby went on to win big in their quest for a, a third straight state title, 41 to seven. All right, time for round. I'm David Allen. A big win in the first round for the Crest Chargers and on Friday night. Thanks for stopping by for this special playoff edition of Football Saturday. I'm David Allen. The Shelby Golden Lions opened the playoffs with a big win last week over West Stokes. On Friday night, they hosted West Henderson. Falcons don't belong in the jungle. That's what the sign said as the Golden Lions took the field on Friday night. A rematch of the second round last year when Shelby won 21-7 early in the ball game. Howard Thompson hit as he throws, but it stays in the air long enough for Tim DeLette to pull it in. You saw the flag come in, but that was a defensive penalty. That would set up Mark Williams around the left side. A lot of running room. Makes a nice cut there to get it down inside the 10-yard line. Gain of 32 on the play, and Donovan Gidney on the next play would take it in from eight yards out, and Shelby led it 7 to nothing. The Golden Lions were not through. Thompson back to pass, looking, looking. Now he's going to come to the near side. He's going to find Gallette. Nice hit out of bounds there by the Falcons, but Gallette hangs on. The Golden Lions up deep in Falcon territory. Larry Raper coming to the near side, though. Coughs up the football. The Falcons have it, and momentarily feeling pretty good, but Zach Corliss back to Pratt, pass a little bit of pressure, dumps it over the middle, but that's Aaron Briscoe there for the Golden Lions. Nice return. He coughs it up, but Shelby recovers down around the nine yard line and that would set up Mark Williams. His second carry of the ball game. This one good for nine yards and a touchdown. Extra point by Turner Almond led it 14 to nothing now for the Golden Lions and the cheerleaders on Friday night bundled up as were the faithful trying to stay warm and there's Mark Williams. This is his third carry of the game. This one a 58 yard touchdown run. Huge hole there by the offensive line. Williams exploits it for the touchdown. A couple of plays later, late in the first half, Donovan getting his second touchdown of the half. And the Golden Lions led it at the break on two touchdowns apiece by Williams and Gidney, 28 to nothing. We'll be back with second half highlights. Or it's too late. Man, it didn't take long for something to get going in the second half. Jonathan Hopper on the first play of the half steps in front of Zach Corliss. 
Takes it back to the 11-yard line, and on the Golden Lions' first snap of the second half, Larry Rapers in from 11 yards out. The extra point by Turner Almond was good, and it was 35 to nothing. Shelby defensive coordinator, Coach Lance Ware's defense doing the job right there. Corey Brooks comes through for a tackle for loss. He had, I don't know, four or five of those on the night. Okay. And then how about the Shelby passing game? Anthony Franklin to Zach Gallette. Look at him haul that one in on his fingertips. That one might be a sign of things to come. Gallette, a sophomore, Franklin, a junior. And how about Mario Finney getting his chance. The freshman in there at fullback powers his way to the goal line on the next play. He'll punch it in from a yard out. Extra point no good, but Shelby led it at that point 41 to nothing. Got to show you another pass play from Franklin to Gallette. Puts it up there for the big guy, and he goes between two defenders to pull it in. The Golden Lions just way too much on Friday night. Jalen Farrar and the marching band getting after it as the Golden Lions advance 41 to 7 over West Henderson. Shelby will host Pisgah next week. That'll do it for this half hour. Stay tuned next half hour as we'll have highlights of the Crest game. Any team in the postseason tonight, the Golden Lions holding, hosting Pisgah. First quarter, Shelby up 7-0, looking for more. Howard Thompson get it to Donovan Gidney, 52 yards. It is 14-0, Golden Lions. Next look, Pisgah trying to answer. Tyler James, quick pass off the hands of his receiver into the open arms of Shelby's Roderick Blake. How about the interception and the return to the six? Next up, Donovan Gidney again, punching it in from six yards out. 21-0, Golden Lions. Pisgah trying to get on the board. Victor Gomez with the field goal attempt, but you know what? Shelby plays special teams well, and they like that field goal block right there. 40-14, to 14, Shelby rolling one more time. Myra? All right. What do you expect as they just... All right, 11 and no one's catching them. You can make it 7-0 Golden Lions. Later, more Golden Lions, more Gidney, and it's 21-0 Shelby at the half. Look, this one looks like it's going to... Come easy. First mm -hmm. play of the third. Mark Williams heads left, follows his blockers. And folks, he's gone. 69 yards. Shelby looks like the two-time defending state champs that they are. They look great tonight. 40-14, the final. All right, they do look good. Let's check. Going on to win their second straight state title. This year, deja vu all over again, except the game was at Shelby, where the Golden Lions haven't lost all season. The average margin of victory is 32. Would the Golden Lions march for three straight titles continue? Well, Cam Man, Ron Lee was at this one. He has the story from Shelby. You fought this far. You've been here before. Heck, you were even playing the same guys you did last year. Welcome to a 2A bash fest tonight, folks. Over here, you've got the hometown Shelby Golden Lions, who beat a team last year to almost make it to the state championship. Oh, and by the way, it was the Pisgah Bears they whipped up on last season. So they're a tad on the cranky side because they don't want to drop another one to the Lions. Lions, Tigers, Bears, I'm freaking out. The fans, well, the fans are stuck to their seats because it's so cold out here. But that's nothing a little hot water and a spatula can't fix. They love football, and I love football. I love shooting football so much, I actually blew off my wife's 38th birthday tonight. Yep, that'll get me about three weeks of couch time. But check out what the overtime bought her. Oh, shiny. I'm telling you, the girl's like a fish. Show her something sparkly and she goes right to it. Speaking of which, let's go to the highlights. Two minutes off the clock in the first. Golden Lions on the drive. When the line collapses and quarterback Howard Thompson gets folded like a lawn chair by the linebacker. Bears take over, but are forced to punt on fourth down. Check that, it's a fake. Jared Connor floats one to Josh Porosky, who takes it to the first down for Pisgah. The next pass by the Bears. Well, it ain't so good. The pickoff by Aaron Briscoe, and he turns it upfield, putting it deep in the Bears' territory. Time to cap off the drive. The end around handoff to Larry Raper puts the first points on the board. The extra point gives the Golden Lions a 7-0 lead. Lions on the march again. Check out the long run by Jonathan Gidney with a 50-yard TD. The Bears would love to tie this one up, but it makes it kind of hard to do when the other team is running past you with a ball you just threw. The interception by Rod Blake pins Pinsgut deep. The Lions firing in all cylinders. Punch a hole in the Bears' defense with a five-yard TD run by Gidney again. The extra point, and Pisgah's looking at a three-touchdown hole here. The Bears on fourth down try a little razzle-dazzle cough up the ball. I don't think that was in the playbook. Golden Lions recover the fumble and take control again. Remember that fake punt in the first quarter? The Bears figure, hey, it worked once, let's try it again. But the Lions sniff it out and plant the back 
into the ground. Remember, guys, you've got to air right before you can plant in the fall. Seven and a half to go in the third. And Shelby on the ground and pound again. The handoff and series of nice moves on the secondary by Mark Williams hang six more points on the scoreboard. But the extra point is blocked by Pizga. Make the score 33 nothing. Time winding down to third, and the Bears have got to show something for it. It happens on this play with a nice pass from Tyler James to Jared Conner. Bears on the scoreboard, 33-7. Less than a minute to go in the third, and the Lions showing no sign of letting up. Raper on the run again, and puts a 70-yard touchdown into the books with nobody even close to him. Scores now, 47. A buck and a half left to go in the game, and Pinska still showing that fighting spirit. James goes up the middle with Brad Bermudez for the Bears' touchdown. But despite a valiant second ever by the Bears, the Golden Lions show they're still king of the jungle with a 40-14 win over Pisgah. I'm Cam Man Ron Lee for Football Friday Night. The always creative Ron Lee never letting us down. All right, well, now time for the only game in the Queen City tonight. West Charlotte hosting Richmond. Welcome to this special playoff edition of Football Saturday. I'm David Allen. There was only one game in town on Friday night as Pisgah traveled to Shelby. Take you over to Shelby on Friday night. Rematch of last year's Western Finals in the 2AA. Howard Thompson on fourth down, back to pass. He's hit by Casey Mashburn. The ball comes loose, and Adam Green's on it for Pisgah. The first big play of the ball game goes in favor of the Bears. And then Tyler James, back to pass, drops it off for Brad Bermudez. He loses the football, but somehow gets it back inside the Shelby 20. But James is going to have that ball tipped and intercepted by Aaron Briscoe. Briscoe on the move down the far sideline, picks up a couple of blocks. Tremendous return for the Shelby senior. And that would set up the Golden Lion offense. The crowd on Friday night enjoying the Golden Lions early, and they would enjoy Larry Raper right here. Coming to the near side, sticks the football across the goal line. Turner Almond's point after made it 7-0 Golden Lions, and the cheerleaders getting everybody involved on Friday night. Jane's back to pass. Tanya, the Shrine Bowl selection, is going to pull him down. Corey Brooks was back there as well. Then James, back to pass, is going to loft it out, and it's going to be knocked down as Calvin Gillette comes up to lay the big lick. And then on Shelby's next offensive possession, it would be the fullback. Donovan Gidney just busting off the right side, gets it into the end zone. That's a 50-yard touchdown scamper for Donovan. It was 14 to nothing, Shelby, and the Golden Lions just kept on coming. Roderick Blake, again, a tip pass. He's going to have the interception. He's down inside the 10-yard line, and that would set up Gidney again. Second touchdown of the half for Donovan. He plows his way into the end zone, and Shelby led it at that point 21 to nothing, and the faithful bundled up as they were on that cold night. Loving it. Watch the hit on the kickoff, and that's Briscoe again. Shelby was hitting hard on special teams on offense. Here's another one. Watch Jonathan Hopper come up and say hello to Brad Bermudez right there. Again, that Shelby defense on Friday night doing its job in the special teams again. Pisgah just trying to get on the board at the half, and they block the kick. Shelby led it at the break, 21-0. We'll be back with second half highlights. The second half, Shelby would score touchdowns on three of its first four touches in the second half. Here's the first one. Mark Williams from 69 yards out. Got some good blocking up front, and he scampers into the end zone for the touchdown. And here's another fake punt. Watch the hit right there by Aaron Briscoe on Drew Hall. That one didn't work, and Shelby got the football back. Mark Williams said, hey, it worked from 69. Let's see if it works from 24. Not quite as gaping a hole, but Williams makes it work nonetheless as he's in for the touchdown, 24 yards. Two touches, two touchdowns in the second half for Williams. The Bears would finally get on the board, and they do. Late in the third quarter, James to Conrad for the touchdown, but Shelby would even answer that. Larry Raper makes a nice move, then he's going to cut back against the grain, get into the secondary, and they will not catch him. 80 yards for Raper on the play. That would give Shelby a 40-7 lead, and the Gold Lions would send the reserves in for the fourth quarter of play. Anthony Franklin at quarterback. Going to drop it off to Zach Gillette. This is a fourth down and five play that nets 19 yards. A nice first down for the Golden Lions. The 
Golden Lions would find themselves in a fourth down play again. Franklin this time would run for the first down. Shelby tried to run the clock out. No more points added. The Golden Lions win it 40-14. to They'll host Mount Pleasant next week. That'll do it for this half hour. Stay tuned next half hour. We'll have more highlights from Shelby versus Pisgah. State championship football that features at least one title in each of the last five decades. That is remarkable. Tonight, the Lions' quest for a third straight championship runs into Mount Pleasant. We got Lions and Tigers and Shelby. Oh, my. Second quarter, Mount Pleasant drives, trying to cut into a two-touchdown deficit. Tigers go up top. Ty Hill, Jason Talbot, 17-yard gain. Shelby's defense holds from there. They force a fourth and eight. Mount Pleasant up top again. This time, Hill can't connect. Golden Lions take over on downs, and now it's time to operate a little bit. Howard Thompson to Larry Raper. Five tough yards for a first down. That's how the most of this game goes. Shelby kind of methodically driving most of the night. This one sets up a field goal try. Trent Vanderhoof. Shelby stretches the lead to 17-0. And now it's time for all kinds of defense. Little pass there. Donovan Gidney with a great defensive play there. All kinds of speed on both sides of the ball for Shelby. Fourth quarter, Mount Pleasant keeps on coming. But Hill is picked off by Jonathan Hopper. Now, Jonathan wants to take this baby to the house. But he gets hit and loses the ball. And that's about the offense tonight for uh, Mount Pleasant. The Tigers recover there, but Shelby's defense will slam the door one final time on fourth and short. You can break out the trophy one more time for the western half of the state. Shelby headed back to the state title game, 17-0 the final over Mount Pleasant. Well, I'm going to tell you, the feeling never changes. It feels good. Uh, really good Mount Pleasant football team that we were able to beat tonight. Their guys uh, hit us hard and had a good scheme against us. Uh, I thought our quarterback did a good job of, of uh, executing our offense, so we got got some other stuff going tonight we hadn't used in a long time. We feel good. Uh, well, we've we been here before. We just we know what we got to go do. We're going to go do it and try to do it again. I'm, I'm happy for our kids and our community. and just you know I don't think it's hit me yet. Just It's, it's going too soon, but uh, we'll get, you know, Live another day. And now, no matter how many times they go, I hope they enjoy it. The bar sets so high out there. Two AA state title games, Shelby against Reedsville next Saturday night. Carter Fitz. Yes, 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 they did have a loss on the resume. But those are the types of breaks you get when you're the two-time defending state champs and Shelby was sending a message early to Mount Pleasant. Well, you know what? It won't be easy. <laughs> and it wasn't. Golden Lions first possession. Howard Thompson with the fake keeps it and takes it around the end for a 30-yard pickup. He's finally dragged out of bounds at the 20. A few plays later, Donovan Gidney taking it over from the two, putting the Lions on the board. It's 7-0 early in the first. Then on their next possession, we check it out. Howard Thompson with a quick hitter to Zach Galati, and he would score easy from 41 yards out. Shelby was winning easy up 14 zip midway through the first, and that's when Shelby got, let's just say, a little conservative. Huh? Maybe like the Panthers? <laughs> Mustering only a field goal in the second half, 32 yards out by Trent Vanderhoof, making it 17 zip, and that's the way it would stay. Shelby with the dominating defensive game tonight, shutting out a high-powered Mount Pleasant team and heading back to yet another state title game. I'm going to tell you, the feeling never changes. It feels good. Uh, really good Mount Pleasant football team that we were able to beat tonight. Their guys uh, hit us hard and had a good scheme against us. Uh, I thought our quarterback did a good job of, of uh, executing our offense. So we got, got some other stuff going tonight we hadn't used in a long time. It's a good time to use it. Hey, here's a look at the two AA state title game. It's Shelby against Reedsville. That's in Raleigh, and that game will be played Saturday night at Yo. Yeah, and how about this? Shelby Golden Lions 13 and 1 on the season. Six straight regional final. Back to back two double A state champs. Defense only giving up eight points per game. Cam Man Ronley did such a great job last week covering Pisgah at Shelby that we sent him back to Shelby for tonight's big matchup. You know, there are a couple of distinct problems when you show up in a game late, and they're already well into the second quarter, and the score is already 14 0. You tend to miss highlights. But good news, folks, I forgot something. I'm a moron. That's because I forgot what we've got here tonight is a couple of powerhouse teams that'll sure to give me plenty of highlights. First, the visiting Mount Pleasant Tigers. I've followed these guys before, and let me tell you, they're tough. Then you've got these guys, the hometown Shelby Golden Lions. I was here last week when they took down Pisgah Hard. The loser heads home. The winner heads to the big show. I figured that out by looking at the roster. So let's get to it. Middle of the second quarter, Lions on the march. Quarterback Howard Thompson. 
Richardson looking deep, but he takes a second too long and the line folds. He ends up getting hooked in the face like a big mouth bass and dropped to the ground. That cost him 16. Well, that was my highlight for the half. Lions deep on the drive, but have to settle for the field goal. Check the score, 17's at 1038 left to go in the fourth. And the Tigers, kind of like me, are running out of chances. Quarterback Ty Hill goes to drop it deep, and he does. Problem is, the dude's wearing a black uniform. Jonathan Hopper scrambles down the sidelines, and he's seeing green. He's seeing green. Oh, and he doesn't see is that nasty hit on him by the defender. He coughs up the ball, and after a couple of seconds in the scrum, Lions get the ball back. Three minutes left to go in the last quarter. Jose Sanchez grabs the ball and punches through the line to make a good run of it. But I'm starting to get nervous here, folks. No touchdown to show, and I'm running out of time. Well, maybe if I hang out with the Golden Lions cheerleaders for a while, my luck will change. Or my bad luck will just rub off on them and I'll be held liable for a fractured knee or something. Back to the game. Tigers down 17 points. It's do or die here. The defense holds and drops the running back behind the line. Shelby looking to tack a few more on the board. The handoff to the running back, who not only gets stopped at the line, but body slammed for his efforts. But that was all they needed, and that was all she wrote. The Shelby Golden Lions knock off Mount Pleasant at home and head to the big dance. For the Tigers, a hero's welcome by the loyal. Wonderful. Uh, it never, it never, uh, the feeling's just, it's wonderful. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just blessed to have a good group of young people that um, they want to come out and work hard and play hard. We made a little dap. Did, uh, everything that we did was it was in the plan, but uh, uh, we had to make a few changes along the way to adapt to some of the things that they were doing. So how are you, you going to change your playbook for next week? Next week's the big one. Uh, we'll, we'll just do what got us this far. <laughs> Stay tuned. Shelby ain't done just quite yet. I'm Cam Man Ron Lee for Football Friday Night. All right, tonight the Division Two for a state title. Thanks for stopping by for another playoff edition of Football Saturday. I'm David Allen. It's the Western Finals of the 2AA on Friday night as undefeated Mount Pleasant battles Shelby. Didn't get any better on Friday night than the Western Finals in the 2AA. Mount Pleasant undefeated 14-0 coming into Shelby to take on the Golden Lions, the two-time defending state 2AA champions. And early in the ball game, it was the Shelby defense hitting hard Stuart Wallace right there on Jose Sanchez. And then back to pass is Ty Hill, and he has swarmed under Lance Tanya, Calvin Gallette, and company making the stop there. Shelby would force a punt early, and on the first play from scrimmage for the Golden Lions, Howard Thompson on the quarterback keeper around the left side, 30-yard scamper, and that's going to set up Thompson again. This time he's going to dive inside the five down to the four-yard line, and that would set up a touchdown for the Golden Lions. Donovan Gidney plows in from four yards out. He's in for the touchdown. Turner Almond's point after was good. It was seven to nothing. Shelby and the Golden Lions defense kept on hitting. Corey Brooks stopping Sanchez cold in the hole right there. And then back to pass is Hill, but that's Gidney in there on defense. Comes straight through on the blitz. Takes down Hill, and the Golden Lions defense was tough all night. Ty Hill this time has some time, throws one up, but Jonathan Hopper is there to knock it down. One of the few chances that Mount Pleasant had to make a big play on the night. Howard Thompson talking about making a big play. He's going to find Zach Gallette wide open behind the defense. Gallette had to wait on it just a bit, but it was a 34-yard pass play. And then later in the drive but the first play of the second quarter, it's going to be Thompson to Gallette again. This time Gallette hauls it in, takes it in for the touchdown. Another 34-yard strike. This put the Golden Lions up 14 to nothing, and that defense kept on coming. Big hit on the quarterback there by Briscoe. Ball comes loose. The Golden Lions have it. Tigers would get one of their biggest plays of the night defensively when Russell Freeman sacks Howard Thompson there for a big loss. The Golden Lions eventually would give up the football, but that defense kept on hitting. And Shelby would lead it 14 to nothing at the break. Years ago, and both coaches are expecting. Experience, contact Blanton's new car. Uh, they've, they've been a good football program for a long period of time, and they, they really know how to, to win football games. They're a wing T team on offense, and they line up a lot of folks and blitz you on defense, and they've got great speed on the defensive side of the ball. So it'll be a real challenge because of the experience and the quality that they've got on their, on, in, in their program as well. 
Reedsville's an excellent football team, and they, they're very, very athletic on both sides of the ball. We're going to have to play another great game to be in it. I mean, and uh, um, our kids have been here. That helps. A lot of the kids that are on the Reedsville team this year were on the 05 team that we played at Chapel Hill. So both teams have experience. So I don't think, you know, coming into the venue, being, you know, at a, at a bigger university playing the game is, is, is going to work wow either one of them so it's going to come down to the field what you do between the lines experience is the name of the game for this state final players on both teams have been here before especially rams running back tayon graves who might be looking for a little revenge after losing in 2005. we had a lot of experienced guys uh tayon my running back started in the 05 game for us as well and you know my quarterback probably the reason we've played as well is he started as a sophomore yeah, last year but he's really matured and uh it's played really well for us, and that's really made the offense go. The Golden Lions are looking for the three-peat, and after losing a number of players from last year's championship team, this year's squad just continues to impress Coach Chris Norman. The thing that this team does uh, that makes them special is they come to school every day, they come to practice every day, and they just get better. They, they found a way to win. I mean, and I've said it all year, they amaze me every Friday night. If it's not the defense, if the offense is not clicking, the defense steps up. You know, we've scored on special teams. It's just been, it's been a true team, team effort. These two teams will leave it all on the field at Carter-Finley Stadium Saturday night at 7.30 p.m. For News 14 Carolina, I'm Tim Baer. All right, Tim, and a reminder, you can check out news14.com to check out all of those coaches. All right, taking a look now at the 2AA championship game. The Shelby Golden Lions making a habit of playing for state championships, and on Saturday they'll face the Reedsville Rams, a rematch of the 2005 state title game. News 14 Carolina's Tim Baer takes a look at that matchup. Saturday's AA matchup has a little history. Shelby will play in their ninth championship game, while this will be the fourth trip for Reedsville since 2002. Both teams matched up in the state finals two years ago, and both coaches are expecting much of the same. Well, I, I talked to Coach Norman uh, Friday night after the game, obviously, and he said, you know, you really don't have to trade tape, you just put in an 05 tape, and you see the same thing, and you really do. Uh, they've got a great program, a great tradition, and you know, they know what it takes to get here because they've won two in a row now, and uh, they've, they've been a good football program for a long period of time, and they, they really know how to, to win football games. They're a wing T team on offense, and they line up a lot of folks and blitz you on defense, and they've got great speed on the defensive side of the ball, so it'll be a real challenge because of the experience and the quality that they've got on their, on, in, in their program as well. Reedsville's an excellent football team, and they, they're very, very athletic on both sides of the ball. We're going to have to play another great game to be in it. I mean, and, uh, um, our kids have been here. That helps. A lot of the kids that are on the Reedsville team this year were on the 05 team that we played at Chapel Hill. So both teams have experience. So I don't think you know, coming into the venue, being you know, at, a, at a bigger university, playing the game is, is, is going to work wow either one of them so it's going to come down to the field what you do between the lines experience is the name of the game for this state final players on both teams have been here before especially rams running back tayon graves who might be looking for a little revenge after losing in 2005. we had a lot of experienced guys uh tayon my running back started in the 05 game for us as well and you know my quarterback probably the reason we've played as well is he started as a sophomore yeah, last year but he's really matured and uh it's played really well for us, and that's really made the offense go. The Golden Lions are looking for the three-peat, and after losing a number of players from last year's championship team, this year's squad just continues to impress Coach Chris Norman. The thing that this team does uh, that makes them special is they come to school every day, they come to practice every day, and they just get better. They, they found a way to win. I mean, and I've said it all year, they amaze me every Friday night. If it's not the defense, if the offense is not clicking, the defense steps up. You know, we've scored on special teams. It's just been, it's been a true team, team effort. These two teams will leave it all on the field at Carter-Finley Stadium Saturday night at 7.30 p.m. For News 14 Carolina, I'm Tim Baird. It's time for a break, but stay with us because there's much more still to come on your state championship preview edition of Friday Night Football.
Next one, prepare the best way you can for the next game, and, and that's all you can. Cinderella story. That honor goes to Lincolnton. Sure, they went to the finals in 05, but they started this season 1-4. and four, But after a few, the Golden Lions are shooting for three straight, plus our video trip. You're watching HS Game Time, brought to you by your Carolina Chevy dealers. Well, when you talk great programs in high school football here in North Carolina, one of the schools at the top of that list is Shelby. The Golden Lions have been one of the top teams in the state really since they started playing football. The program has over 600 wins all time. This year's team has lived up to the high expectations, posting a 14-1 record. They'll go for another state title against a familiar opponent, the Golden Lions, down Reedsville in the 05 title game. But how will this year's squad do tomorrow against that same school? I tell you, our kids this year have done a real good job of handling the season. You know, they've, they've played well together. Uh, a lot of them have been with us on a couple of trips now, so they, they sort of know what to expect. I think that's uh, that's a good thing. But uh, still, you know, come Saturday uh, Saturday night for us this year, we run out of the tunnel down here at NC State. It's just it's just it's a it's a wild feeling. And it's just uh, it's really special. Obviously, you're back to back champs, so you've been wearing the target now for a couple of seasons. Has that helped you guys be tougher, you think, through this regular season and manage the success so well? Well, I, th I think our kids understand what they have to do, if that makes sense. You know, and, and we were we were hit hard by graduation last year, and uh, but you know, our guys never looked back. I mean, we we experimented as, as we've gone through the season. We've gotten better in areas. What do you basically know about the Reedsville Rams? And, and what I've read in the notes this morning is that. They've been steamrolling people and putting averaging like 53 and a half points a game. And the thing is, their their speed is on both sides of the football. Uh, again, a lot of the a lot of the guys on this, in particular the seniors, we were, were on the team that we played in 05, and uh, so it's somewhat of a rematch. And I'm sure they're going to be you know, pulling pulling from that uh, motivation also. All right, Langston, we know about uh, certainly Shelby's offense. We know about Larry Raper, but that 53.3 points in the playoffs that their opponent's been averaging, what do you think is going to happen in this one for Shelby? They have not played a defense like Shelby, and I think that's going to be a difference in the game. Shelby has the running game to keep the ball away from that offense, and they have the defense to stop that offense. What happens is when you're throwing the ball so much and you're not completing passes or you're getting pressure that you're not used to getting, you go right. three and out, then you give that running game the ball, and then you just get to sit and watch and drink Gatorade for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's going to happen. I told you guys right. in August that yep. Shelby was going to win the state championship. Yep, I was going to say. I'm not changing. I told you, you guys in August that Charlotte Catholic was going to win the state championship. I'm not changing. All right. I told you guys in August that Independence was going to win the state championship. All right. I'm not changing. Staying with it on Shelby. We'll the playoffs on their way to a possible third straight win. Let's take a look at that road right now. Delano. Well, the big the big win on the way had to be the Mount Pleasant game. 17 to nothing. You see the Tigers put up a good fight on the road at Shelby. Not a not a tough place to go in and win. Shelby, of course, the two-time defending state champions going for their third in a row. All right, and then the Southwestern 3A 2A champs, those Lions are fourth straight title game, two-time defending Two AA champs, 65 and 18 in playoffs since 1972. That is an impressive record. So is this one. Defense only giving up seven points per game. One of the keys there, the balance. Rushing attack is always key. And how balanced is this? Look at look at the numbers here. 772, 711, and 778 for these great <laughs> running backs. That's almost identical, and the touchdowns are very similar as well. All right, Shelby and Reedsville are two programs with a big, big time tradition. Reedsville has won 12 state titles with their last in 2003. Shelby has 11 titles and more than 600 victories in their storied program history. Brian Stevenson has a preview of this game as one team looks to add another to their tradition. They're getting used to winning championships in Shelby. And with each year, the tradition of the Golden Lions gets a little bit richer. But don't think Coach Chris Norman takes making it to the state finals for granted. I think that now I enjoy what's happening, I enjoy the experience, and, and try to sort of take it all in a little more, take a deep breath, step back, because, you know, it, it, it really isn't going to happen every year. After an early season loss to bitter county rival Chris, some thought this might be a down year for the Golden Lions. Instead, they have rattled off 12 straight wins and find themselves back in a familiar spot. These guys, we were hit so hard by graduation that they 
have just worked. They, you know, I've told some of them, they come to school every day. They really do. They work, uh, they work in the classroom, then they come out to practice and they work hard and they've gotten better each week. It's those on and off the field principles that have made Shelby the successful team it is year after year. And it goes way beyond Coach Norman's tenure. Going all the way back to uh, Casey Morris and, Co and Coach Gerald Allen and Jim Taylor, uh, those are the, the things that they started. And those are the things that and our, our, our kids have grown up around that tradition. He knows that if the winning tradition is going to continue on Saturday night, they will have to play one of their best games of the season. We played uh, Coach Teague's team in, in 05 in Chapel Hill, and, and I know that's going to be another motivating factor for them. You go back and look, you're going to see Reedsville's name in the, in the Champions Book a whole lot. And uh, so this isn't their first rodeo. Following the Golden Lions, Brian Stevenson for football, Friday night. All right, here's what Coach was talking about, those Reedsville Rams. Averaging 53 points per game in the playoffs, <laughs> so those are some winning numbers. Averaging 258 yards per game, rushing too. Now, running back Tayon Graves has 1,794 rushing yards and 36 touchdowns. He's a player to watch, but so is quarterback Ray Ray Butchie, 1,862 passing yards, 21 touchdowns. And the most impressive stat for these guys, they're 39-8 and eight in the playoffs since 1972. I believe you said that earlier, Danielle. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. Coming off a state title game loss in 2004, Shelby was determined to correct that outcome and went out to beat Reedsville 26-18. Shelby finished that season led by Tavares Jolly and Daryl Montgomery. That win was the start of back-to-back -back state titles and could become a three-peat win tomorrow. We'll see how it goes. Do you want to look like we do on Football Friday Night? Promo Logic takes care.